Ever pondered the repercussions of financial isolation? How does it feel to be disconnected from the world of finance, especially in a developed nation like Canada? Financial isolation, a state where individuals or communities lack access to essential financial services isn't a phenomenon confined to developing nations. It's a stark reality even in countries with robust economies. Consider the case of the indigenous communities in northern Canada. A recent study published in the Journal of Rural Studies revealed that a staggering 70% of these communities lack access to basic banking services. This not only hinders their ability to save and invest but also forces them to rely on predatory lending practices. This situation isn't unique to the indigenous communities. Take a look at immigrants, especially those who are new to Canada. Without a credit history in the country, they face significant barriers when trying to open bank accounts, secure loans, or even rent homes. Then there are the elderly. In an age where digital banking is the norm, many senior citizens find themselves technologically isolated, leading to financial isolation. The inability to navigate online banking platforms restricts their access to their own finances. But what does all this mean for Canada as a nation? Financial isolation in its many forms stymies economic growth, it increases the wealth gap, exacerbates poverty, and hinders social mobility. It's a barrier to entrepreneurship as those without access to credit find it near impossible to start businesses. Moreover, financial isolation fuels a vicious cycle. Those who are financially isolated often lack financial literacy, making it even harder to break free from the cycle of poverty and isolation. This, in turn, perpetuates the problem, making it a systemic issue that requires a systemic solution. In conclusion, financial isolation in Canada is a multifaceted issue affecting various segments of the population. From the indigenous communities in the north to the immigrants in the cities, from the elderly who struggle with digital banking to the would-be entrepreneurs without access to credit, the impact is far-reaching. It hampers economic growth, widens the wealth gap, and perpetuates a cycle of poverty and financial illiteracy. But by acknowledging and understanding the problem, we take the first step towards finding a solution. Because only by ensuring financial inclusion for all, can we hope to build a truly prosperous and equitable society.